Drake dropped for all the dogs and dog got dog to check out when she wouldn't fetch. I feel like this is all that's left. Fire and brimstone. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of the My Wits End Podcast. I'm your man T Wits, business owner, sightseer, recognizer of things that are very valuable. And I want you guys to recognize something. Last episode. If you caught last episode, we talked about the Kendrick and Drake beef. We're going to continue talking about that. I think it's very important. It's very important for hip hop. It's a very important moment for all of us to acknowledge and to realize what it represents. It represents a chance for us as independent artists. If you are an independent artist watching this channel right now, like subscribe for the algorithm, please. I appreciate you guys. Remember that this is our moment. Um, the industry is b- being broken down in so many ways. Cat Williams wasn't lying when he said that the truth is coming to light. Do y'all believe that? Let me know in the comments if y'all believe that 2024 is the year of the truth. I believe I'm a truth teller. I don't like to say that. I just like to tell the truth. And um, as of right now, another angle that I think the Drake and Kendrick beef has taken is, uh, unfortunately, with this Mob Ties disc. The Mob Ties track with Drake unfortunately has exposed that Vori, I believe he's from Texas, Texas or Philly. I think he's associated with Philly because he was a dream chaser. I believe so. Um, regardless, Vori, you know, every, I'm, I'm late to this. Everyone's talked about this. I'm late. I'm just throwing this in because it's part of the, the topic of what I'm discussing. Once again, Drake is a huge cog in a machine that must keep going that began long back in 2009 when he popped up on the scene. You know, Wayne gave him the stamp and then after that, he just, just took off. He's just been taken off. He's been so far gone, for lack of better words. You guys got the reference. And uh, ever since being so far gone, we've seen so many different versions of him. We've seen him elevate consistently and, and I think that's one of the main things that's kept him so powerful in the game. Uh, a chameleon of sorts, being able to exchange his personas. We now know due to reference tracks like this, among many others that have been released, that Drake likes to work with artists and take on their personas, take on their their words, their cadences, their melodies. I'm not gonna be mad at him for it. I just, I, I now put myself in a position where I understand something very, very full and through. That Drake is a new age artist that is an anomaly and an amalgamation of what it is to be about the business first and no matter what to stay on top in the business other end of the spectrum continuing from last episode kendrick lamar is the pure artist he is the artist that came from a certain set of situations made the best of it elevated progressed and now he is where he is and i have grown to have a bigger respect for kendrick with this beef with this back and forth because a lot of things have come to light that i did not know before what are we talking about here let's center it what are we talking about we're talking about the integrity of the game and understanding that if you are a hip-hop artist and you rap because there's different ways to be an artist in hip-hop there's 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 the art of graffiti there's the art of being an activist and standing up for what it is that 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 you represent but Kendrick Lamar is a purist. He represents the purism in hip hop. The purity, I'm sorry, there's no such word as purism. The purity in hip hop. And I I have no choice, because I'm not a stan, but to say that I believe that from here, we as independent artists, I myself as an independent artist, I have to recognize that the integrity in hip hop has to be withstood with us independent artists. The ones who have not signed the deals, whether you, whether you potentially will or not, when you do, are you having anyone write for you so that you can make hits, so that you can maintain your position and forever stay there? Like, subscribe. T.Wits, My Wits End Podcast. Sponsorship from Rosenthal Acura. John Haddad, I appreciate you. Guys, what kind of artist are you? I personally, I, I wanna take the time to discuss a little bit about my business. Um, Tribe Trinity Entertainment was founded in Las Vegas, Nevada, 2020 during the pandemic. I did it because I wanted to show people 
what it is to start something that builds communities and creates infrastructure for other people to benefit off of. Keep up with me. I love y'all. Like, like and subscribe. T.Wits, my wits and podcast. When, uh, when my business partner, Trey Overton, and I began this, Tribe Trinity was about creating a, a system where people have, can, can have different skills and build on each other from there. The music industry has become so about money and so about pushing propaganda and messages and this power play that we have artists that wanna struggle to be at the top and maintain just for the sake of struggling to be at the top and maintaining. I have a track recently that I, that I created. It's called Knowledge and Energy and I talk about this, uh, this numbers game and what's the point of being a part of it to be number one when it's a numbers game. What is a game? It's about wins and loses. I'm not striving to be number one. I'm looking to make the most impact. That's me personally as T.Wits, T-D-O-T-W-Y-T-Z, like a subscribe and please hit the bell for the algorithm. I'm gonna keep saying it because I want you guys to do it. It's important for us to build. Shout out to my team, Asterix, my guy, Trip. Trip Star, he's a monster, guys. He's excellent. We got a song coming out together. Trip, what's it called? Oh, Indigo Blues. Indigo Blues, y'all. That's my guy, off the, off the chill. I got a lot of songs, guys. Indigo Blues, it's coming, it's coming. You guys are gonna like that. It's a nice little amalgamation of a uh, little bit of uh, some melodic flow and hook and harmony with uh, just a real, real dope, simple message. But yeah, back to what I was talking about. Kendrick and Drake, guys. Um, we're in a space now where we're questioning a lot about my guy Drizzy. Drake, 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 Drake. I love you, bro. I love your music. I have since you started. If you ever watch this, I want you to know that you've inspired me in a lot of ways. Um, I don't hold any of this against you. I, I believe that you have wanted to be the best. You told us from jump that you wanted this forever. You know? It may not mean nothing to us, but, you know, you put it on everything, bruh. And you've shown us that, that this was everything to you. Um, I just want to bring up a topic without... I want to play devil's advocate and I wanna be honest, and I don't want people to think that I'm even taking sides right now. Huge Drake fan, love me some Kendrick from time to time, but when it comes down to it, we're talking about the integrity of hip hop, and I think it's important to talk about the fact that Drake is a great example of what happens when, ugh, I hate to say this, but when you, when you sell your soul for something, when you become a slave to something. I think Drake is a slave to his fame. I think Drake is a, an artist who loves what he's accomplished. And he loved it so much from Jump that he always wanted to maintain it. And I'm not even, I'm, I'm not condoning or, or, or trying to make excuses for Drizzy, you know, but it seems as though he is caught up in a situation where his own weakness became himself. And um, it's, hard to, it's hard to imagine a world where Drake just isn't writing any of his songs at all. I don't believe that's what it is. I'm gonna take a second to actually break it down. I think that Drake's major hits, the stuff that he chases for Billboard, the stuff he creates to maintain on the charts, to say that he's, you know, just, just the hit guy, is the stuff that gets written for him, is the stuff that has that extra melody and energy that a motherfucker who's freezing and always stiff standing still in fucking Canada is not gonna be coming up with. That's fair. I mean, their sound is literally chill. So a lot of these bops that he give, it's from the influence, it's from the flavor that he gets from being around different artists, the little bit that he takes from here and there. And um, it's, it's become very, it's a very powerful thing and he's not the only one to do it. You notice that only his shit gets leaked. He's just that hated, guys. He's that hated. Why are we only hearing Drake reference tracks all the time? Think about it. Like, subscribe, I appreciate you guys. T dot wits, T D O T W I T Z. I got some new music coming out. You guys check it out. I appreciate you guys for watching and listening. Hit the bell. Enjoy the Acura experience at any budget. When you choose a certified pre-owned Acura from Rosenthal Acura, you can expect the same leading standards as a new Acura. Each certified pre-owned vehicle comes with a 12-month, 12,000-mile 12 certified limited warranty, as well as a 24-hour roadside assistance service. And you can be sure that your certified pre-owned Acura is in pristine condition. Every eligible certified pre-owned Acura must pass a 182-point inspection and will include a vehicle history report. Choose a certified pre-owned Acura for affordable luxury today with Rosenthal Acura, located in Gaithersburg, Maryland. 
at 623 North Frederick Avenue and tell them T-Wit sent you. Trap Trinity.